And I got to say, I agree with Jerry. That, that February retail number, uh, you know, was a so-so. The January number, though, really in those revisions stood out to me. Also, the Red Book, they used to call it the Johnson Red Book Index. It was up 8.5%. That be consensus, that tracks retail sales via same store trends on a weekly basis. So I think we've got some momentum, obviously with gobs of money pouring into the whole sector uh, with this latest round of stimulus checks, there's gonna be a lot of excitement and money to be made. Retail analyst Heather Herzog joins me now and Nest International Chief Economist Aaron Sykes. First, uh, you know, ladies, I'd like your thoughts on just uh, the, this, this next wave of stimulus coming in. How big of a deal, Heather, will it be for the retail sector? I think this is going to be a huge deal. I mean, you think about how much debt was paid down since the last uh, year, which is 2020. Uh, it was $83 billion. So I think while people were hunkering down, certainly um, uncertain about what was going to happen in the future, they were using all that money via stimulus check to pay down that debt. So we have pent up demand right now. Uh, the National Retail Federation is expecting retail sales to go up between 6.2% to 8.2%. And to Jerry's point, I mean, Brandon Maxwell is going to be the creative designer of Walmart. Uh, I don't know if that's really going to make, uh, you know, make him any sort of moves for Walmart. But listen, I would go to a Walmart just to see people at this point. I've been a hold up in my home right now. People just want to get out and, and spend and see people. <laughs> right. You know, Aaron, and what's really amazing to that point, uh, paying down debt, credit card debt has come down dramatically in the last year as well. It does seem like households are sitting on a ton of money. Will they actually go out and spend it? I think we're going to sh see a shift in where we're spending our money because in the last year, we've spent a lot on improving our homes and that will continue. However, we are also all so sick of wearing sweatpants and athleisure every single day. So if you look at Urban Outfitters numbers that just came out, seven of the top 10 um, products that they sold in January are dresses. So women are really ready to kind of strut their stuff again and go out out and dress up, which will spark a whole new impetus of what is trending in retail. So I think that'll be super interesting going forward. Uh, it's great that people are paying down their debt on credit cards. However, I am concerned with how much we are tying consumer behavior and spending and retail numbers to stimulus, because it seems like we're only having up months immediately after stimulus checks are sent. And that's a right. bad habit right. to get into for the long term. Unless you think Nancy Pelosi is going to send you a check every three months. And hey, let me ask both you ladies, uh, what do you make of the, what's happened in the sector from, a, from an investing point of view? These brick-and-mortar retail names have been absolutely mind-boggling. If you look at that XRT index, uh, it's up 100% year over year. The top stock there is GameStop. But there's nothing but small names like Scholastic. I mean, Heatha, it's these are the names that a year ago most people thought would go out of business. Instead... They've been super high flyers. Are we changing also as consumers, or was it just one of these things where they were just so oversold? No, I think, you know, Aaron was talking about trends. I think consumer packaged goods is another trend as well. I mean, who would have thought that Target would have been our go-to store for the last year? And uh, you've seen, you know, I was looking at a study done by Oracle here. Uh, consumer packaged goods was a focus, an unprecedented focus for the last year, up 43% versus 32% last year. And, you know, across the board, you know, different spending groups, uh, you know, I was looking at this one statistic here, millennials ended up spending up uh, the uh, spending on fancy napkins Charles fancy napkins was up 337 percent so um, it's not just these smaller retails but we're talking about the Walmarts and the targets of the world uh, target for example which is a, a stock that I do like uh, uh, right. comp store sales up 13.7 percent Aaron uh, by the way uh, I've got a minute to go so I'm gonna go to you last on this I wanted two things do you think this new designer guy is going to make Walmart hot? We remember Target uh, became sort of a household name with er er Eric Mizrahi. A and what name is standing out to you? What trend is standing out the most uh, uh, in terms of something that our investing audience may be intrigued by? 
Sure. So I think that Brandon Maxwell will make, um, he'll be a big hit with Walmart customers. And that's because this is not just a one-off situation like we had with Target where Lily Pulitzer came in or Isaac Mizrahi came in for, you know, a two or three month span. He actually, Brandon Maxwell has a job. This is a long-term play with Walmart. And he really is personally invested because he is a Texan born and bred. And he said, I want to merge what I'm doing now in my life, you know, the glamour of New York and LA. And and I want to bring it home to the people I grew up with. So he is really, truly investing himself wow. and his brand in Walmart. I, I just have to say, they've, but they've tried to do, they've tried to do creative directors at Walmart so many times to elevate that brand. Yeah. I don't think this is going to be successful. But I do love me some Brandon well, Maxwell. He's a great designer. I'm glad there's a disagreement here because between Aaron and Jerry Willis, I am intrigued. We will see, ladies. We'll revisit <laughs> this not long from now. Heath and Aaron, thank you both very much. Appreciate it.